Good day, Internet. In this video, we've got part two from the Pythagorean Theorem. Here we'll get a little bit more context and maybe a word problem to go along with this type of question. Let's get started. So we're starting from the Pythagorean Theorem, and if you remember from part one, we've seen the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared get used in its basic uh, examples. In this video, we're going to see a little bit more complex steps to solving the Pythagorean Theorem or when you have more to do in the problem than just use the equation. There really isn't much more for this slide. Let's move on. Our first example here is going to be asking us to determine the perimeter of the triangle. Hmm. Rounding to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Now, looking at that, I would like to just add up all the sides, but I don't know the third side. This is where the Pythagorean Theorem comes in. Since it's a right triangle, you can see here that right angle marking indication in the corner. Uh, we should be able to use the Pythagorean Theorem to solve for that third side. Excellent. Something like that. Now that we've set it up, we can start solving like we did in part one, where we do 11 squared is 121 and 5 squared is 25. And since we're solving for b squared, instead of adding to solve, I have to work backwards. I have to subtract. And I'm going to do 121, take away 25. And in doing that, I'm going to set up for just having b squared. Good. Something like that. Now that I've got b squared equals 96, I know that I have to figure out what times itself is 96. And like in part one, we have to square root. So I'm going to go ahead and square root the, obese, uh, the b squared and the 96. Uh, yeah, calculator required here. Okay, well, we're going to have to round this as 9.80 for now. Since we need it as the nearest hundredth, it's going to be helpful. So now that we have that value, b equals 9.80. So we have that value, 9.8, as our b value. Whoa, 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 where are you going? We're not, we're not done. No, 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 wait, come on. So we need to get the perimeter. We have to get the total perimeter we're not we haven't answered the question yet so we have to go in and say 11 plus 5 plus 9.80 there now we have the perimeter our final answer is 25.80 okay now in this slide we're confronted with multiple choice but it's asking which of these is not a right triangle well, it stands to reason that the triangles that work for a squared plus b squared equals c squared are going to be right triangles, and the triangle that doesn't work with a squared plus b squared equals c squared will not be a right triangle. So, I think this means we have to test all three triangles for the Pythagorean Theorem. Ooh, that's kind of a lot. I wonder if there's anything we could do that would speed this up. There. Uh, hopefully that helps, since with the Pythagorean Theorem you have to square everything anyway, so I figure why not square everything out outright? Well, I'm looking at this picture, and something jumps out at me. The 9 and 16 make 25, that's fine. The 100 and 576 make uh, 676, that's also fine, so we can add the legs together. But over here we get 121 and 49, it would be a mistake to choose this one because, sure, uh, 7 and 11 are smaller than 17, but it would have to be the squares. 121 and 49 is 170, so there's no way that makes 17 squared. Our answer, the one that's not a right triangle, is C. All right, a proper word problem for our third scenario. Uh, the wizard wants to launch a... Wait a second, this is D&D. &D. Whoops. The wizard wants to, wants to launch a magic spell that reaches 50 feet. Is she in range from the beast? Well, it helps to know that a square is worth 5 feet here, but uh, I'm going to need a little bit more information than that in order to be able to do this. So the distance between her and the beast is obviously this length here. Uh, and that looks pretty good, although I don't know how far that is, uh, because I only have to, I can only count the squares across, so 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight squares. Now eight squares is 40 feet. I'm gonna put S for squares. And then one, two, three, four. Now that's four for squares. All right, well, if each square is five feet, eight uh, would be 40 feet, and four would be 20. This isn't looking good. But I'm not done. I have to do the Pythagorean theorem and actually judge this distance, uh, see if the beast is, in fact, in range. And in order to do that, we need the Pythagorean theorem. We need that distance from the wizard to the beast. Our legs values, the eight and the four, is just by counting them. So we plug those in, 8 squared and 4 squared. And while I'm at it, I'll square them. So we've got 64 and 16 that make a total of 80. Now 80 uh, is our squared value. And it would be a mistake to try and compare that to the 50 from the original problem because this is a squared value. We have to square root it first and this is only the counting squares part of the problem. I haven't even gotten to the feet. So I'm going to have to square root both sides. And I'm going to get something just shy of 9, I think. Should be. Well, yeah, because if it was 81, again, it'd be 9. So uh, the square root of 80 is 8.94427. I don't know how many decimal points I'm going to need here. So I'm just going to leave that screen up on my calculator if I need to reference it later. But I'm writing down some of the digits here. Uh, 8.94427. Uh, we'll leave that as our C value. Uh, so it's just shy of being 9 squares. Well, if this was 1 square, is 5 feet. Uh, so in order to figure out our actual distance, I'm going to multiply the 8.9442 by 5. And that will give me an actual distance between the wizard and the beast. On the calculator here, I have 44.72. And that distance is less than 50. So I'm satisfied saying that the answer is, yes, she's in range for her magic spell. There we go. And that'll about wrap it up for this video. See, our goal was to apply the Pythagorean Theorem to slightly more complex scenarios where there were either uh, additional steps involved or more context to the problem. See you next time!